Welcome to What the Body. We have Nia Patterson here today, aka uh, the friend I never wanted on social media. Um, so I, I want to hear that story too. Um, yeah. You are everyone's queer and black internet auntie, which I love. Um, you are a business coach, consultant, writer, speaker, activist, author. You got a new book coming out, and we are going to get into all of this. Welcome to What the Body. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited to to have our audience get a chance to meet you. You and I have chatted before. Um, and I I just I really hit it off with you. And so I'm so excited to get into it. How are you today? I am doing all right, you know, like like I have been through the like September, October, like dryer cycle. Um, Mm -hmm. and like was not, did not sign up for that, but here we are, here we are. I had a bit of a weekend, so I can relate some. Mm -hmm. Right. Like someone just like threw you in the dryer and was like permanent press, like, thanks. So Nia, tell everybody a little bit about you. I kind of gave the intro and, um, I'd love to hear sort of, you know, where you are right now. Oh my gosh. Where am I will, my fun fact that I always tell people is that I absolutely hate introducing myself. Oh. Like I, I tell people this. And then the other day on one of those like roast yourself um, astrology pages, there was a meme for Virgos and it was like hates introducing themselves. <laughs> and I was like, go away. Um, you got red. <laughs> like accurate. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where am I today? Today yeah. I'm chilling in my apartment in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska. Um, I am sitting at my desk in my bedroom and I just like slurped a bunch of ramen noodles before this. Um, so that's like kind of where I'm at mentally. Um, but <laughs> love that. Love that. How did I get here? How how did I get here? That's a good question. So I, you, you gave me a great intro. I do a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. I, I think somewhere along the business path, I got this in my head that like, why can other people do things like that? I can't do like, I can do that. Like I can do that and I can probably do it better than them. So that is honestly probably how I started every business I've ever started. Do whatever. Um, yeah yeah and I remember a time when I thought like who am I to start a business I don't have the money I don't have the financial backing I don't have the rich uncle who's gonna lend me a small loan of a million dollars um and so like what why would I ever have a business and then I think like like maybe like a year six months later I started my first business um and I really like the quote I don't even know who said it or if everyone just says it but the quote of like the first problem that you solve as an entrepreneur is how to fund your business and that is like so accurate like I funded it by I start my first business was called the Dapper Dolphin um and it was a sticker shop on Etsy and I quote unquote funded it with like sticker paper and a sticker cutting machine that I had asked for for Christmas the year before and never took out never took it out of the box um and that was that was that was the beginning of the journey that got me to the seat right now got it yeah so we all I know we all want to know what is the friend I never wanted and how did you come up with that yeah yeah I feel like I don't get to tell anyone this anymore but like um so this is awesome. I am in recovery from an eating disorder. And so originally the friend I never wanted was the friend I never wanted with like the last like ED capitalized for like eating disorder. Huh. Um, you know, just my branding was so on point. Um, and I actually came up with it during a support group session where we were talking about how like our eating disorders were like these like creepy like friends that we like never signed up for um and like one girl was like yeah mine's like the guy with like no teeth at like the 7-eleven who's like trying to like push a slurpee on you and I was like yeah this this tracks and so um I 
I think I went home that day and like started my blog at the time and um, named it the friend I never wanted because it just clicked with me after that session. And even now, like very randomly, like very sporadically, someone will be talking about like their eating disorder and they'll be like, I didn't even sign up for this. And I'll just be like, yeah, I got you. I I named a whole account after that. And I remember like people went through a phase in like 2019, 2018, where they like were renaming their like recovery accounts, like their full names because they were like professional status. And I was like, but I really like my name and I don't want to get rid of it. And so I just still have it. Yeah. That's a great story. Completely relatable. I think, you know, we all have a friend that we never wanted, whatever that may be for each person. But I think everybody is thinking of something that is right. The they never wanted. I think it's completely relatable. Yeah. 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 So, so tell me more about your coaching and how did you get into that? Mm. How did I get? Okay. So I, I guess I've been coaching for many years, but was always afraid to say that I was coaching people or that I, that I was a coach because one of my best friends, um, from when I moved to California in like 2014 was a life coach. And she was like very adamant about like, who gets to be a life coach, who gets to be a business coach. You do the like $10,000 certification program. You, you know, you do all the learning, you do the the federations all these things and so I was like oh oh she's like got her shit together and so like I could never never and so in my mind I had a very specific like vision of what a coach was and it was it was thin and it was white and it was well to do and it had its own office and all these things and it was not me it was not me but I would go around like helping people figure out their problems, which is essentially what coaching is. Um, People would always come to me and be like, I have this problem. How do I fix it? Or like, you know, someone would like ask me to like work on like a graphic and I would of course give them the graphic and also like business advice. Um, My therapist still drags me for this, but there was a period where like last year, I think where my therapist was like, you know, you're coaching people like you're already doing it you just don't use the word you don't charge anyone you're doing it for free and then you're developing resentment because you're doing it for free and not charging anyone or calling it that and then you're mad right like, okay like <laughs> she put that back on you I was like okay you right you right it's fine um and so <laughs> honestly the coaching The coaching like runway or transformation or going from coaching for free and just helping people to, you know, like I'm a coach and it's on my business cards has been rough. Um, I have honestly lost myself in it and it has been hard. It's been really hard. Like... I started listening to other coaches, like all the coaches say, like, invest in yourself and, you know, you need a coach and pay X thousands of dollars for a coach. And I had just gotten to a point where I was finding myself. And then I started listening to all of the chatter around me and I could not for the life of me remember who I was or what I was good at or where I stood on things it was like my head was like just like a straight up like beehive just filled with people talking yeah so it sounds to me like you have what I have which is imposter syndrome <laughs> mm, yes that as well right that as well so yes you're in your head you think who am I to be doing x y z whatever it is and then you see other people doing it you hear what they're saying and now you're all confused where when you when you really get into just listening to yourself and get grounded, always there are the answer, right? Yeah. Answers yeah. are always inside you, not externally. But I say that as if I know and, and practice this, I do practice it all the time, but man, do we get in our own way, right? Yeah. And it's so frustrating. 
Yeah. How do you, how do you manage that? Mitigate it? How do you work through it? Therapy's always good. Always. This, this is such a good question. How do I get through this? Cause I mean, like I, at some point you've got a book coming out. All right. I mean, that has been kind of like the, the returning to myself, I guess you could say. Um, I ended up doing, okay, well, I ended up making a few questionable financial decisions this year in terms of dropping a lot of money on coaching. And there was a point where I was just like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Like, I have just spent all this money for someone to tell me what I already knew, which was kind of the like most annoying part. Like, I already knew this. And... I have been doing this just like silently on my own for years. Like I've been doing it and I'm now paying someone to tell me what I'm already doing. And so I paid one more coach, <laughs> one more coach. I met with her, told her the situation that I'd gone through. I met with her and she was like, I can help you with this and this. And I was like, okay, I don't really have another option right now. Like I was literally like, I'm that was what I the least the last thing I wanted to do um and through her program I created my program which is breaking body barriers and it is like a one-on-one or group coaching program I've taken a couple clients through it and I during this process part of it was to like create the program and in it a workbook for people to work through their like internalized fat phobia and their body image issues. And the program was essentially the workbook and also working through that one-on-one. And there was like a turning point in the last like two months. So like when I've been put in the dryer on permanent press where I was just like, I hate what I'm doing right now. This isn't fun for me. I'm not vibing. Like I'm, I literally said, like, I feel like I'm walking through, like, chocolate jello mm. or, like, chocolate pudding. Like, I was like, that is what is going on right now, and I'm not having a good time. And so I was, like, just scrambling, trying to figure out, like, looking for something to light me up again. And I was like, if I take my program, which the only reason why I created this program was to help other people, and I made it more accessible to people, that would be okay. Right. That would be that would be cool for me. And I was like sitting on the couch and I was like, okay, it's time to go to bed. And I was like, I just I have this idea. I need to write this. And so I wrote the foreword for the book. Um and then the next day I woke up, went to the coffee shop and like formatted like 170 pages of this book. Um <laughs> and so it was like the first hyper focus that I had had mm. in like months. You were excited. Yeah. And like as an ADHD or like neurodivergent person, like when I get a hyper focus moment, I am I am like so happy about it because it is so it feels so good. It's so rewarding for me. So you knew, okay, your body was telling you this is the right move. Yeah. And like all the the only point of my account after a certain point was like to help people. Like I had essentially gotten to a place where I was eating, living okay with myself to an extent and other people were gaining that from me as well. And so I was really showing up because I was making a difference in other people's lives. And so if this book further makes a difference in people's lives, like I'm here for it. And like, I know I am like, there's so much in my head Mm -hmm. about body image and eating disorders and diet culture and anti-diet work and fat phobia and anti-fat bias and I just like poured it into this workbook and essentially this book um and so I know that like people who read it are going to like learn a lot that's new (laughs) because I created new things um I created new ways of thinking about things I pulled from other um anti-racist work that I had learned in college I pulled from experiences that I had myself um it's a lot 
in one book yeah it's a lot and it's not just like a workbook where like you're filling in mad libs like it is like I am telling you my story as well as walking you through like how to go to the doctor and ask for accommodations like there's so much in there that I feel like people especially fat people need to know and it's not like only fat people are going to get things out of it although I firmly believe that when you address the most marginalized people of society it only trickles down to everyone else um i think that everyone will get a lot from it but i think especially fat people who are so conditioned to think that they are not worthy of taking up space like need this book so you just made me think of something that happened to me on a plane um i was coming back from somewhere i can't remember now and it was a bigger plane and I had a seat kind of like in a, in one of the two aisles. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I sat down and they were, they weren't, um, regular seats. It was, they were almost like emergency exit seats. So they're kind of, Mm -hmm. they were like very firm and they had the thing that kind of pulls up. Right. And, um, a gentleman came in and sat down next to me. And one of the first things he said to me was, I'm so sorry. And I said, sorry for what? And he, he pointed to himself. He was a bigger guy. And he said, you know, I'm sorry, next time I promise I'll get a first class flight to me. And I looked at him and I was like, first of all, don't ever apologize for taking up space. And second of all, I'm really glad that you said that to me and nobody else. Let me talk to you about what I do. And Mm -hmm. I pulled up Hickey and I pulled up the podcast and like, he was nearly in tears. And I was like, but I just, that had never happened to me before. No one had ever apologized to me in that way. And it was so profound to me doing the work that I do and learning everything that I've learned, right. And impacting people with the deodorant and the podcast and just getting emails. Right. And we had the best conversation for the next hour that we were on this flight. And again, I never stopped getting amazed by things like that, because it's just, and and as we were leaving, I was like, don't ever promise me. You will never, ever apologize for yourself ever again. And he was like, Mm -hmm. I won't, I won't, you know? And so I, I don't, I cannot wait, wait to read your book. Um, I haven't because it's not out yet, but I, I would, I haven't read it, so I can't really speak to it, but I would offer that it it can have this as much impact on a thin person as it can on those that have these questions, because we don't know and we don't understand. And we like, right. We don't have the experience to be. And and I think everybody should understand now that I know a, a, a little bit about the, 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 just the, the people and what they go through every single day, they're scared to do things. They don't leave their house. Right. And it's yeah. unacceptable in so many levels. And I feel like education in this way is, is impactful for those that you're, you're really not speaking to, right. Yeah. You're speaking to those who need the help, but I, I would offer that I'm going to get a ton from it too. And I can't wait just from my experience, but that, that oh, yes. a story, because you said, you know, we always say, don't apologize for taking up space. Like, I, you know, I always say, I want to empower people to take up space. And it's like, I really got a firsthand view of what that looks like. Right. Yeah. And it was just, it was yeah. terrible. It was terrible. And I, I venture to say that he was very lucky that he sat next to you because there's so many people in this world where if he had sat down next to them and had, I I hate the word encroached, but like encroached on their space. Yeah. Like it could have ended up in him being kicked off the flight. And this is like the, this is like the, the the not even that bad level of being fat in public. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, um, there's a lot in your book. So I imagine it's hard to pick one, but think of an example that you could share with the audience about something really impactful you wrote about, um, you know, just 
th- think of something because you, you, you really, it sounds like there's a lot in the book. There is, there, <laughs> there is because yeah. it's, it's like almost 200 pages. Um, and I think one of my favorite activities in the book, there's, there's a bunch of little activities, but one of my favorite ones is the, it's like called a thin ideal avatar and authentically you avatar. Mm -hmm. Um, And in the thin avatar, you are creating like, or you're writing down everything that you think I can only do this when I'm thin. I can only do this when I'm able-bodied. I can only do this when I'm young. I can only do this. Like if I were white or if I like, if I fit into like that, that like, ideal identity zone and I'm saying ideal identity with quote marks for those of you who can't see but um like it there there's so many fat people that I've talked to and myself included who have this like ideal version of themselves it's the whole like oh you're just a thin person living in a fat body like there was a period of my life where I thought like I could just like unzip my skin and come out and I would be like thin Nia and thin Nia liked running and thin Nia liked salad um and thin Nia liked all these things that I don't actually like but Mm -hmm. in my mind I was like when I reach that weight I'll be able to do that and it'll be the most fun thing, the easiest thing. And so you write all these things down in this thin ideal avatar and you go through and you pick off like things that you actually want to do, things that you think you can only do, um, that like you literally could only do if you were in a thin body. You pick off things that you could do regardless of your body size. And then you like think about that, you work through that. And then you do the authentically you avatar Mm -hmm. which is like genuinely like things that maybe you thought only thin you could do but you can still do them like there are fat people that run and if running is something that like you only thought you could do when you were thin that's not true like we'll find a way to get you to do it and um they're like if you thought that you could only wear shorts if you were thin that's not true you can wear shorts and be like you at any size and So creating that like authentically you avatar and seeing like all these things that you are capable of doing, all these things that you don't actually want to do that you thought you only needed to do because you were thin um, and like what society told you and like finding out like who you are at your core. um, That's just like one activity. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. When is it coming out? November 14th of 2023. Okay. Yeah. I know. I'm just, I just picked a date and was like, we'll just hustle for that date. Um, But yeah, like I'm so excited and I'm so excited to like talk to people about it and see people reading it. Like people have already started pre-ordering it. And like, I was sitting with my friend and I was like, who just PayPal'd me money? And like, I was like, (laughs) what is going on? And I was like, oh my gosh. Someone, someone just pre-ordered my book and I was like I literally just like I don't know like it was like I just had like a moment of like out-of-body experience where I was like someone wants to read what I wrote like that bad they like pre-ordered this and that was so amazing okay <laughs> so another thing that came to mind I wanted to ask you so you obviously you wrote this book about all these experiences. Can you share with the audience a couple of experiences that you've had that have been not so mm-hmm. great that I'm sure they will be able to relate to um, <laughs> and not feel alone, right? That's kind of the goal of this podcast is to like bring community together. So I'd love to hear some stories that have Gosh. happened to you that impacted you and that you kind of turned around and put into this book. Yes, yes. Um one experience that always kind of sta- kind of stands out to me because it intersects so many identities is one of the times that I went to the doctor. Um, well, I guess it was a few times that I went to the doctor between 2021, I think, and 2022 maybe. But um, I specifically went to the doctor to get an, like an extension or a permanent um disabled parking pass 
um, because it's really hard for me to walk long distances and all these things. And so I went, I had already done the like two temporary passes that the state of Nebraska allows and I needed a permanent one before my temporary one ran out. And the first doctor that I went to was a new doctor. Um, well, she was actually a resident at like the family center or whatever. And she immediately started in talking about there was no like, there was no reasoning that I needed this pass. There was no like, um, there was like no d- documented information even though like I had two years of documented experience about being in pain. I had been to physical therapy like two to three times, like all these things were in my chart. And then she wanted to like talk about my blood pressure and like my potential for diabetes and all these things. And I, I am very, very good about keeping my cool in the face of people being horrible to me. Yeah. Um, And in this moment, I was so mad. I was like, I literally like, am coming here asking for this one thing. You're not giving it to me. And like, I, I need it. And I, I raised my voice and like, I didn't yell at her, but I raised my voice to her. And I immediately felt so horrible because I was like, this isn't me. This isn't like in my integrity, but at the same time, like I'm literally fighting for my ability to like, go out in public and like run errands and like do things that everyone else can do and because there's no like medical like reasoning for me being in so much pain which isn't my fault it's their fault for not finding one because I've been going to you for years like like oh it was so frustrating and I did end up apologizing to her but like I didn't get the disability parking pass and so then I had to go to a different doctor and the woman was like so nice. Her nursing staff was black. I was so excited Mm. and I get in there. We like have this whole conversation. I tell her about my eating disorder recovery history. I tell her like all about like the pain in my back, all everything. And as, as we're like finishing, she's like, I just need to do a quick, like, physical exam to make sure that everything's fine um and I'm like okay she's like can you get on the table and sit down I'm like sure um and as I'm walking up she says have you ever considered weight loss surgery and she wouldn't know but weight loss surgery is one of the most triggering things for me to be brought up and I just sort of said it's not an option for me like we literally just had like this whole discussion about the fact that I am in recovery from an eating disorder And you still felt the need to ask me that. And, you know, prior to this, they had told me she would sign the form, all this stuff. And I get a call the next day saying that she just wasn't able to sign the form for me. Wow. And the only thing I can think of is that I did not go along and assimilate to her wanting me to get weight loss surgery because everything else had gone well. That was the only time that I had disagreed with her or, you know, shown like a conflicting viewpoint. Um, I ended up having to go to the clinic that specifically works with eating disorders um, to get the the approval for this disabled parking pass, um, which she did immediately with no, like no questions asked. She's like, obviously, like, you fit the bill for like what disabled means and yeah and gave it to me so like I wasted like hundreds of dollars going to different doctors for this disabled parking pass for them to just be fat phobic and not give it to me yeah I I feel like I've heard most most troubling experiences and the most shamed people are are at the doctors yeah people die because of it. Like, like mine affected my daily life, but thank goodness it didn't like lead to someone finding out that like I had cancer or like I had pneumonia or something that would have been like, that would have like medically affected my ability to like stay alive. Yeah. Right. They just, they just say, go lose weight. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. That's yes. hard. I, I, I think my goal of talking about that often is, is to just bring as much awareness to it as possible. Right. I think that's yes. important. So how do you get through that when you have to go to the doctor? I mean, a lot of people will say, I just don't go anymore. I've heard that. Like, I just don't, I just don't go. Um, they don't have someone they trust. They don't, you know, um, and I think it's, I think it's really hard. Yeah. It makes me so mad that getting, I mean, well, already getting medical care is a privilege, but like not being able to go because someone who should be on your side is objectively not, it yeah. just makes me so angry. Um, how I get through it is that I am very well educated now on like what is reasonable, what's not reasonable. Um, I don't let people weigh me. I usually don't raise my voice with them and I'm very like nice, but like that time was like one of the times where honestly I think I was in the right. But um it's frustrating. Yeah. I mean you're a human being, it's frustrating and you know, you showed frustration. I understand. Especially for like times with like things like the assumption that I have diabetes or the assumption that my blood pressure is high because one, the color of my skin and two, the size of my body. And neither of these things are true, but because they don't even do the test, they don't even like, no. And then they're like, oh, this is weird. Your blood pressure is normal. Like maybe we should check it again. Like, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, But I mean, honestly, when it comes to going to the doctor, I tell basically any fat person, especially fat black people, like to find their smallest friend who like gets them and to take them with them as an advocate because doctors are so much more likely to listen to you if there is someone else in the room and someone who does not make them feel objectively like upset. Yeah. That's so, yeah. And it's good advice, but it breaks my heart to even hear that you would have to do that. It's but so I, frustrating. So frustrating. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Well, sorry. You have to deal with that on a daily basis. <laughs> I mean, luckily it's not on the daily, but like, yeah, I definitely did do a post yeah. that's on my Instagram right now. And it's like, like four things I would do if I had to go to the doctor this week. Oh, um, great. So like that is, I try to make like content that I feel like educates people and also inspires people. But like, I also genuinely want people to have resources and tools yeah. and like the information and knowledge. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. are you still coaching? I am coaching. I switched up my landing page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're coaching, trying to figure out all the things you're doing right now. It makes, it makes you joy, makes you excited. Right now, I am coaching. I am doing the book. I am doing some people's social media. Okay. I'm doing some people's graphic design. Nice. Um, I'm doing some account management for some other people's accounts. Um, I thoroughly enjoy doing lots of things, at least. So that's nice. Um, but as far as like, the long-term end game there there is none right now um there's no like this is what I enjoy most and we'll do it nine to five or definitely not nine to five but yeah I I like doing a lot of things I changed my landing page to be um like I will work with you on whatever problem or struggle or project that you have going on and I will like I did see work. that. Yeah. So it's like, I will help you with this because I'm like really good at working on a lot of different things and problem solving. And that feels like the coaching I want to do more than like, here is this program. Let me walk you through it. Yes. I get yes. that. Yeah. But I am toying with the idea of doing a, like a group program that isn't so much a program it's more like a group support group for like people who want to be in fat community because yeah. every client that I've had or even people who just message me are like how do I find other fat people who get what I'm going through I feel so isolated and I'm like I hear you I hear you so that might be on the horizon but we'll see we Hickey did a photo shoot with 
um, Caitlin Scott Boudoir, who um, was my co-host and <clears throat> it was incredible. I, everybody, there was like 33 people there and every people good number tears. And they were just like, I f- I'm always the only fat person or I'm always the biggest mm-hmm. person in the room. Right. And people were just finding such joy in the community that was built that, I mean, people are best have found their best friend. I mean, they're just like yeah, them on social and they're all hanging out and it's just, it's so lovely. And part of my vision for Hickey in terms of long-term is to travel around and do that. I want to bring community together because it's incredible when you get the energy together of people who are, who look at other people and feel community and like, people were wearing shorts and crop tops and we got chalk out and we were like, where are the shorts, right? Where are the crop top? And it was just so joyful. And I feel like, um, it was, it was so much, it was so impactful that people again are still friends with those people and experiencing that. And I, I just want to emulate that all over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Like just bring people together to find community because you're not alone, you know? There's, there's not a way that you're feeling that you're the only person that feels that way. Right. You know? Right. And I, I feel like I've heard from people that like, they've tried like different support groups for like fat people. And they're like, I just don't feel like included as like a neurodivergent person or like, I don't feel included as a BIPOC person. And I feel like I am like uniquely qualified to like lead this group because I do exist at the intersection of so many identities. I I love this. I'm happy to support you in anything that you need to make that happen. I think that's necessary and lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to ask you what's next because you just said that. And I, I love it. I love that <laughs> very much. Um, so the book is coming out November 14th. Yes. Okay. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Are you are apparently you- book pe- book things happen on Tuesday? I didn't know oh, this, but okay. someone told me this. <laughs> okay, I did not know that either. All right, so <laughs> it's book Tuesday on the fourteenth, and then or do you have any plans to promote? What what what's how are you gonna? This me? is a great question. I am doing the podcast route, so like, like you that. are literally the first podcast that I have talked mm-hmm. about this on. Um, so like this is awesome, and I have also was like writing down like some podcasts that I would love to be on and then like literally the night like later that day someone reached out to me from that list and was like do you want to be on this podcast and I was like where you like how did that. how I know I was like this just so oh, great bam like it was so cool um so I'm gonna do some podcasts and I am toying with the idea of using my southwest miles points credits for like a a miniature book tour but we'll see Ooh. we will see because that'd be cool that'd that's, be so cool it's great you could yeah. do lives with people you can i'll i'll do whatever you always right? reach me for support um um i don't know what i can do but i just wanted to say that i i will i will someone actually i think i'm doing like a little maybe in I don't even know if it's in person or not but she's in town well like in Omaha but like Nebraska is a town um she's like in Omaha so I think we're gonna get together and like do a miniature event like I think it's the 16th so that might be the closest event to um release day but I feel like I have to do something on release day so maybe I'll call a bookshop or something but we'll see I love this. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. I'm sure our audience is already pre-ordering it as we speak. (laughs) I I hope so. I, I sincerely hope so. (laughs) But tell people, I know I said at the beginning of the episode, but tell people how they can get you. The best way to get me is at the friend I never wanted, um, on Instagram, the link in my bio, which I, you're never supposed to say that because the algorithm hates it, but the link in my bio has everything. So if you're in my stand store, it has the link to pre-order the book. If you're listening to this after the 14th to buy the book, (laughs) um, and it has the ability to work with me and you can listen to like all of my podcast stuff and, do like whatever you need to do that is involved in my link in my link in bio so yeah 
All right. So everything they can find from the link in the bio. And what else do you want people to know? Anything else that we didn't hit on? Gosh, what? I mean, that is, that is such a loaded question. I know. I did it on purpose. That is such a loaded question. I feel like there are so many things that the world just like needs to know, but I'm like blanking on some of them right now. Um, oh gosh. What TV show has brought you the most joy lately? Okay, this is weird. I'm not watching TV right now. Okay. Like, I don't know why. I Maybe I'm just too stressed. But mm-hmm. I have been listening to Fourth Wing, the book. Oh. I've also been listening to um, We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers and oh. highly recommend from, like, Energy. page one. Okay. Um, what? I'm like... I, like, last week was the week of people giving me unsolicited weight loss advice oh boy and so I like made some content around that Mm -hmm. um but I just like I want people to know I guess that like there's never a point where you've just like at least in my opinion like you've just like I am arrived and nothing else can touch me because we are ever evolving and I know that like if if I had had the week that I had last week, like six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, I would have handled it so differently. And like to be able to like not have stopped eating, not have like needed to weigh myself, not have like a complete meltdown and spiral out, which are all like rather extreme responses, but also kind of valid at the time. Um, yeah like to be able to like you know call my friend and like like rant about like these situations to be able to show up in um group and talk about like what like how horrible people are um to be able to just like delete messages from trolls instead of like having to like share them on my stories or respond um all so 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 different from how I would have handled it and I just want everyone to know that like there is the potential for things to get better and for you to be able to handle things in a different way and if you had asked 2014 Mia if they would have handled this differently like they would have been like no this is the only way (laughs) um and to know that now there's like another option is amazing yeah yeah yeah. yeah, there's always another option and you're not there alone. Is. And there, no matter what oh situation it is, somebody else has been through that and it's just a matter of finding them, you know? Right, right. It's, yeah, good. This is good stuff, Mia. Thank you so much for being on the show. I know uh, the listeners are going to get a lot out of this episode. Thank you for having me. Yes. And uh, I will... Um, Send me some content and I will, I want to promote your book on Hickey to Hickey stuff, you know, uh, absolutely. Without a doubt. I will. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being on the show. Nia. We'll see you soon. Bye. All right.
I think I like it. 